Welcome back to Inside the Middle East from Amman. Sometimes, to get the full picture, it's essential to step back and take another look. That's exactly what John Vaz did. He sent us this report on an artist whose work is designed to be seen from afar. Take a look. Israel's Arava Desert can seem a lonely, arid, almost lifeless place. I think that's the beauty of desert. It's very pristine, it's a very clean place. When Andrew Rogers first came here almost 40 years ago, he saw a blank canvas just waiting for something big, very big. I see a beautiful form that has a lot of symmetry. The self-taught artist from Australia finally started fulfilling that vision six years ago with his first ever geoglyph, a giant sculpture looming large in the midst of this harsh wilderness. It's called Chai, the Hebrew word for life. It's all about uh, regeneration and uh, a symbol of growth because this area is being made to bloom. Chai was built with the help of Arab stonemasons from Hebron in the West Bank. Craftsmen more used to building houses with square corners and flat roofs than creating art. So to understand something abstract in the concept of curves was very difficult. And it was only when I asked them how many wives they had and talked to them about the curves of their wives that they understood that that's what was necessary. So when you put it in terms of a woman? Yes. The rocks came from nearby riverbeds, which had run dry long ago. When you look at a rock, what do you see? Well, rock, rocks for me uh, are about nature. They're a focus for our being. They're intrinsic to civilization. Uh, they've played a part in civilizations and still do. And uh, so it, it's all of those things. Two years on and the desert and the rocks were calling again. This time, Andrew built rhythms of life, bigger, more complicated. And for this, he enlisted local Bedouin workers. Even today, he's still explaining to them just what it is they helped create is about all our lives and the things that influence our lives. Hamad al Hawashla was one of the builders. Like so many of Israel's Bedouins, life is about struggle and hardship. And he says because of that, he relates to the geoglyphs. They're a good sign, not a bad one. They show it's possible to survive in the desert, even though life is hard because of the heat and the lack of water, he tells me. A year after Rhythm came Slice, a giant cross-section of a shell, symbolic of life in the ocean, says Andrew, which once covered this desert. From down here at ground level, it's impossible to see all of the geoglyphs at once. They're designed to be seen from above in the wider context of the surrounding environment, which is why they've been built next to a hill. But even from up here, it's impossible to see more than one sculpture at a time, and that's intentional as well. So each geoglyph can be considered individually before moving on to the next. As is the case with all art, both big and small, the ultimate question is, why? Especially out here where most passers-by do just that, either coming from or going to the resort town of Alat, oblivious to what lies just off the highway. I hope that they've acted as a catalyst for contemplation, that they've been able to sit down and look and think what are they about and uh, perhaps appreciate the environment and the desert and uh, just think about life. Overlooking the three earlier geoglyphs, one final piece called Ratio. Built last year, its gold edges catch the morning sun and for Andrew, this completes his work in the Israeli desert. In the last few years, he's built geoglyphs in Chile and Bolivia, 
Eventually, he hopes his signature piece, Rhythms of Life, will stand in 12 different countries. Work which is big and bold and made of stone, but even so, ultimately, it will not stand the test of time. Eventually, this harsh environment will have its way. 2,000 years ago, traders on camels crossed this desert, carrying spices from the east to the wealthy markets of Europe. These ruins are only a hint their lives ever touched this desert. One day, the geoglyphs will be ruins as well, and perhaps that is the ultimate rhythm of life. John Vores for Inside the Middle East in Israel's Araba Desert. And that is it for this edition of Inside the Middle East.